Hello, and welcome to another episode. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that a bunch of you have reached out to me in several different ways on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, etc. Uh, and that's configuration management. Well, you haven't quite framed it as configuration management, but that's how I'm going to explain it in this episode. Uh, you guys have asked, how do I set up my computers and how do I make sure that I have the right software installed? And the answer to that is using configuration management software. Now, configuration management is a, uh, is a you know, buzzword that you'll hear in DevOps and such. Uh, and I'll describe to you several different uh, approaches to it and some different software that you might be able to try out if you want to manage some software on your machines in the same way. So let's jump into my example first. Uh, so spoilers, I manage my <laughs> I manage my machine using a technology called Puppet. And Puppet is a configuration management software that is written in Ruby. And the syntax... Uh, is a little bit Ruby-like, but it's also kind of, I don't know, a little bit YAML-like, but Puppet has invented their own syntax for doing configuration management. And I guess I should define what a configuration management system does. It takes a set of code that describes a situation, uh, usually like packages that are installed or files and locations or stuff like that. And the configuration management system takes that uh, code or data and applies it to a system. It, it makes a system uh, end up in a state that's described by the files. And let me just show you a quick example of that. Let's see, modules, uh, sure, packages. Um, uh, Python is a good example. So here is an example puppet class, and you can kind of see the, the syntax is a little bit you know, YAML-ish like, but it's also like Ruby-like because it has these hashes. Um, and you don't really have loops here, but you can do, uh, oh, I don't have any, <laughs> I don't have any declarative loops here, but there is like an each functionality, which allows you to, you know, simulate loops, but everything here is declarative. And that's kind of an important point with configuration management software is like you declare what it should look like and then it magically runs the right commands that will end up putting it at that state. Uh, so let me just describe what's going on here. So uh, this is my module for installing Python or various versions of Python onto my computer. Uh, I've given the class a name. It's in the packages namespace and is named Python. I'm installing several packages from upstream Ubuntu. So I'm installing Python 2 dev, Python 3 dev, and Python 3 distutils. I need this because uh, the packaging for some stuff is a little bit broken upstream. Um, and you, you need this to create virtual environments. And so here is where I would say I want to install these packages and ensure latest says make sure that they're at the latest version that's available. So that's what this code does here. Uh, this little arrow here means uh, this must have this must necessarily happen before this code here. And uh, this is making sure that this file is empty. Uh, without this file being empty, there's some you know, telemetry code that Debian has to do error reporting on crashes. And I'd rather turn that off. And so I ensure that that file is present and I ensure that its contents are the empty string. And so that basically blanks out this file. Uh, now down here we have a little bit of a different setup. So I have a bunch of packages that are installed from Dead Snakes, which if you don't know what Dead Snakes is, it is a Ubuntu PPA that backports and forward ports packages for Ubuntu. Uh, so you can install old versions and new versions, and I maintain it, so <laughs> I'm kind of dog fooding my own packaging here. And here we set up a PPA. So this is like install or like add a source for packages here. And once that source is set up, so this little arrow here, uh, I want to ensure that all of those packages are at their latest version. I also have to add a secondary dependency here. So this require means make sure to run the state after this other state has occurred. Um, and because uh, basically when you would install from dead snakes, you would do add apt repository PVA dead snakes, and then you would do apt get update, and then you would do apt get install. Uh, fortunately, this line here triggers an apt get update automatically, so I just have to hook into it down here. And that's what makes this setup. Uh, there are a bunch of different configuration management softwares. The ones that I'm familiar with are, 
well, Puppet, of course, because here's my Puppet setup. Uh, but I've also worked a little bit with Ansible, which is written in Python and is really good. I know one of the core developers that works on it. He's a cool guy. Uh, I've also worked with SaltStack. I really did not like SaltStack, but it is another option here. Um, and I've worked very briefly with Chef, but not, not super much. But those are some other options. There's a bunch of others as well. Uh, but those are the kind of the, the four most popular ones. Uh, yeah, so let's let's uh, show an example of how I would add another package to my Puppet setup. Uh, so there's this cool tool called NeoFetch, which my Twitch chat is always like, run NeoFetch, I want to see your setup, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't have NeoFetch installed. So let's go about installing NeoFetch. Now, the way I would probably do this is it's kind of a one-off utility, so I would usually add it to a list. Uh, but I'm going to show you making a full class and then including that. Uh, let me show you my my list where I would normally add it. Uh, so I have this, you know, utilities class where I just have a bunch of random one-off tools, and I would, I would probably, you know, find the place in the uh, alphabet here and add NeoFetch, NeoFetch, um, and then that would do it. <laughs> that would be all I need to do. Uh, but let's actually make a separate new class for this. And neofetch.pp, so class, packages, neofetch, neofetch. And it's usually a good idea to match the uh, namespace and class name with the files. I don't think it's necessary, but it seems to be a, a best practice. And we'll um, have our package here, and the package is named neofetch, and we want to ensure that it is at the latest version. And this is kind of just, you know, <laughs> the dead simplest thing you can do here. Uh, this is actually not enough to ensure the package. So if we run puppet, which I have a little script, we'll, we'll go over the script in a second, um, but it basically allows me to bootstrap puppet uh, from scratch on a new machine. And uh, there's my bad password that I have there. <laughs> um, and it will compile the catalog. This basically just says, uh, find all of the states that it that should be set up, and then it applies the configuration. And usually you'll see other stuff if it's actually making changes. It didn't make any changes here, so it just completed in six seconds. Um, I can actually speed this up. There's one, there's one custom module that I wrote myself that's kind of slow, and so I, I need to fix that. But anyway, uh, declaring this here is not enough. We need to actually include this as part of our setup. And the setup starts in Puppet from a file called site, and site includes some other stuff. Uh, looks like the syntax highlighting is a little bit broken here. Oh well, <laughs> that's not my bug. That's probably someone else's bug. Um, but the way that I've set up my packages is I have a class called desktop, and that includes all the other interesting stuff. So if we look at modules, desktop, manifests, init.pp, this is the desktop class, and it includes a bunch of stuff. Um, I also conditionally include some stuff based on some facts of the system. So if it's not a virtual machine, then I install VLC, Vagrant, and VirtualBox, but um, this is a virtual machine, so this, this block is not going to run. And you can kind of do some basic branching like this. Uh, but we're going to include... Let's see. Include packages NeoFetch. This will add uh, this will add an include to that class that we had before. And now, if we run Puppet again, um, it should ensure that NeoFetch gets installed. And it takes a little bit because it has to download the package from the internet and run the installer. Well, not the installer. It basically just unzips it. But you can see here that we got this notice that. NeoFetch uh, ensure created. So this actually made NeoFetch install. Now if we run NeoFetch, you can see that it's oh, instantly at BabbyBox running Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, etc., etc. Even knows that I'm running VirtualBox, which is kind of cool. Uh, this version's super wrong, but whatever. <laughs> Bugs, <laughs> not my problem. Uh, and we're slightly more than 1920 by 1080. Uh, that's probably my bad, but whatever. Anyway, so you can see I installed NeoFetch. Uh, we can actually do the opposite in Puppet as well. Uh, if we want to ensure that a package is deleted, you can do ensure purged. And if we were to run this again, um, 
you'll see that it will uninstall that package. Now there's an important thing here. Uh, you might think that you can just delete this code here uh, and that would uninstall it, but Puppet and most configuration management softwares only manage the things that they know about. Uh, so it doesn't know to uninstall NeoFetch because it's it's what's called unmanaged. Um, and you know you can you can kind of think of this as like system residue for previous configuration management. This is probably the biggest pitfall that I see in p configuration management, especially when working with you know a large company that has Puppet or SaltStack or whatever setup. Um, it's very easy to end up in this state where you have extra stuff on your system that uh, if you were to bootstrap from scratch, it would be very different. Now there's ways to fix this by like managing everything and then uh, you know purging anything that's unmanaged. Uh, but I find that setup is pretty difficult to get into because you know uh, there are there are 1,800 packages installed in my system, and I really wouldn't want to manage every single one of them. But anyway, you can see that uh, when I ran Puppet, it purged NeoFetch, and you can see that I run NeoFetch now, it is, it is gone. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of that bit. Uh, one other question that I get a lot is, why did you pick Puppet? Why didn't you pick a different configuration management software? And this is kind of personal opinion and also previous experience. So uh, when I worked at Yelp, I uh, Yelp used Puppet to manage all of their machines, and so I was pretty familiar with how Puppet does stuff, and so it was natural for me to use stuff that I was familiar with to manage my own machine. Now there's other reasons I would also pick Puppet over similar configuration management softwares, and the, the main one for me is this support for uh, linters and code formatters. Um, if you're working with, for instance, SaltStack, SaltStack is Jinja templating over YAML or some other similar formats like that, and there's not really much that you can statically check when you're, you know, running a full templating engine over something. Whereas Puppet has a first class syntax that allows me to actually do, you know, linting and code formatting. And if you look at my, you know, pre-commit configuration here, you can see that I have a Puppet validator and a Puppet linter. And uh, this Puppet linter, in fact, has an auto fixer, so I can just auto format stuff, uh, which works really great for my setup. So I, I really don't, I don't worry so much about white space, even though it's a little bit weird in this file. Like the predominant style is to line up all the arrows. Uh, let me show you one that has arrows. Let's see, desktop manifest, oops. I think this one will have arrows. Yeah, so the, the style is to line up all these arrows. So you have like some arbitrary spacing here. And honestly, it's kind of a pain to like manually space this out, but the code formatter will do it automatically for me, which is pretty neat. Um, Another thing to talk about is my Puppet setup is what's called a headless setup. Uh, the typical setup that you do for like a larger organization is where you'll have a Puppet master and uh, that will control every node in your cluster and that each node will check into the Puppet master and say, okay, what is the configuration supposed to be? And it will, you know, Puppet out that configuration to everything. And uh, I'm running in a, a masterless setup and it's kind of configured by this little, uh, let me show that in the other tab. Uh, it's configured by this run puppet script, which is written in Python. And basically what this does, let me scroll down a little bit, it installs Python, or installs puppet, <laughs> Python. Uh, it installs puppet in the home directory. So I'm trying to do all of my installations in user space. It then installs some puppet modules. That's what R10K does. And then invokes puppet against site.pp and I set some environment variables to make sure that uh, things work out better. But that is kind of my setup and hopefully that's a, a useful introduction to configuration management and um, thank you all for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed this and if you have other things that you want me to talk about you know hit me up in the, the usual places but thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.